by Doug Bell. Uh, he is Doug Bell Sports Guy. If you can catch him on Twitter, please do that. And uh, he's a longtime Alabama uh, sports anchor, reporter, and host uh, covering the PGA, covering Alabama athletics, uh, football, radio, uh, play-by-play in the fall. Uh, it was just announced a few minutes ago. We started to uh, touch upon it. Uh, West Virginia signed for 2026 and 2027, a home-and-home -home series with the Mountaineers. Alabama detractors, and uh, I will not put myself in that camp, but I play the role at times, Doug, would mention that Alabama, like a lot of schools in the SEC, do not travel. They don't travel far from home. Alabama has been accustomed to playing that neutral site game against the likes of Michigan and Virginia Tech and some other schools. It's pretty much a yearly thing. This season, it's going to be the likes of Duke, uh, and they got this home and home. They did go to Penn State about seven or eight years ago, um, so they did make that trip. But West Virginia for a home and home. Your thoughts about that and just the approach to Alabama's scheduling that obviously comes under a lot of scrutiny. Well, uh, again, many of these games over the last five years have been made for TV matchups, uh, Duke included. Um, but again, when you look at the schedule, Mark, this year, Duke, New Mexico State at South Carolina, Southern Miss, Ole Miss, and then you have the open week prior to the road trip to Texas A&M, Tennessee, Arkansas, off week prior to LSU, then at Mississippi State, Western Carolina, at Auburn. Um, boy, that schedule, again, it sets up, at least in my estimation, um, for a lot of success. Well, Doug, uh, college football fans want to see the elite teams play each other out of conference, and I'm in that category as well. Uh, so I'm a bit harsh on some of these schools for not playing elite teams. So, for example, Alabama's playing Duke this year. I have no issue with Alabama playing Duke. I would just like them to be playing somebody else as well. Uh, if you take a USC, they always play Notre Dame, and then they tack on a Texas or somebody else. So it makes for an extremely difficult schedule out of conference. Uh, Alabama played Louisville this past season. And while people would defend Alabama saying, well, we didn't know that Louisville was going to be the worst team in the ACC and one of the worst teams in the country. Sure, I understand that. They're typically an eight-win type program. That's who you thought you were getting. But I would like to see Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma, those teams play a little bit more often uh, because you can generally project that those upper echelon teams are always going to be upper echelon teams. Uh, and then when you when you schedule the West Virginias or Louisvilles of the world, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get in five years. I agree. I, I, I'd like to see more of those big matchups too. But uh, again, under our current model, um, Alabama's got to have that extra home game. People tell me that all the time. Uh, again, I travel around. They know I'm in, Al in Alabama, at least live here, and I cover the tide. And that, that's the biggest complaint you get. Their schedule is too easy. But, again, you have to have that extra home game. Uh, Alabama does not want to go home and home and lose a home game. Uh, they rationalize it by saying, hey, we're going to play this big out-of-conference game at the beginning of the year every season. But, you, as you mentioned, Louisville was not a good matchup. I don't think the Duke game was going to be incredibly competitive either. Um, so uh, what is the answer to that? Well, Coach Saban says let's add an extra conference game. That'll help, that'll help our schedule, right? We'll play one extra team in the Southeastern Conference. Um, he's, he's in the minority among the SEC coaches in adding the extra game, All I, although I think that is inevitable. Uh, but under our current system, Mark, that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, the way it's all set up, um, scheduling a big-name opponent like that and maybe, getting, maybe slipping up and getting a loss, uh, that could affect whether or not you get to the playoffs. So I, I'm with you. I'd love to see more matchups like that, but uh, I, under our current model, it's not going to happen. That's too bad. See, I wouldn't be that adamant about it if we had a playoff system that allowed for all the conference champions to make it, because then it would only matter if you win your conference. But we're trying to compare teams. We get to the end of the season, and the College Football Playoff Selection Committee is comparing teams with completely different schedules right. uh, that, that have similar similar resumes like we saw with Ohio State and Alabama two years ago um, and uh, without those large huge non-conference matchups then it's difficult to make any kind of connection uh, with those teams but to Alabama's credit Miami's coming up on the schedule we'll see if Manny Diaz is able to um, upgrade their situation Texas and Notre Dame coming up those should be very interesting as well yeah, I, I just let me just say the one thing I've, I've never enjoyed about the Alabama schedule. In fact, all the Southeastern Conference teams is 
the the game they schedule before their rivalry game at the end of the year. Uh, these meaningless games. I mean, Alabama has Western Carolina coming up in 2019 prior to the Iron Bowl. I mean, Western Carolina. I mean, and every year they have a game like that, which I think, uh, and again, the, the powers that be at Alabama say, hey, we have to have another home game. It, it's just, it's a financial situation that we have to have. But to me, that is just, that is a meaningless weekend in college football. And that detracts from the game itself when you have weekends like that. It really detracts based on this is the most powerful conference with the most uh, money and rear ends in the seats and eyeballs on the on the TV screen with the Big Ten right behind. And then everybody else is nowhere close. And when you're taking the prime portion of the college football season the week before rivalry weekend, maybe if half of them did that, but it's, it's almost the entire conference. There's a few teams that play, maybe Tennessee and Vandy, a few teams, decent teams get together, but basically the conference takes itself out of the mix, obviously hasn't hurt the SEC, but it's a bit yeah. odd at that point in November that uh, there are these meaningless games being played that are basically scrimmages. The other issue I don't have with it is it's fair in that Auburn's also scheduling a scrimmage game the same week that Alabama is, so it's there's not a discrepancy in regards to having to play a difficult opponent the week before the Iron Bowl. Yeah, but again, we're uh, we're nitpicking because uh, when you look at the bulk of that schedule, um, the se- it, people, at least in my part of the country, as you know, they live and die for the Southeastern Conference schedule. I mean, the other games are just kind of like, all right, we'll get through those non-conference. Whoever we play in the beginning, we're going to beat anyway. But the, the nitty-gritty is the conference schedule. That's what everybody wants to see. And that's why Saban wants to add an extra game. And I think they should. Uh, I, I think they should add a ninth football game. I think, that's, I, think that is, um, I think that would help the conference, certainly the image of the conference. 